Hello seafarers, welcome to Sailor School. This is the third part of the Polar Code playlist. This video is specifically for your oral examination purposes only. So make sure to watch it till the end. Before you start to understand the contents of Polar Code, try to get the idea and the layout of this code. In this video, I will be covering only chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 11 and 12. These are the chapters which mostly contains the general topics of Polar Code and mostly surveyors ask questions related to these topics. Now let us begin with part 1a safety measures starting from chapter 1 general. Let us look into some basic definitions which is necessary for us to understand the Polar Code the way the IMO is trying to tell us open waters open water is nothing but a large area of freely navigable water in which less than 10% of sea ice can be present and as well as no ice of land origin must be present in that sea area so such sea areas are known as open waters ice free waters Waters without any sea ice or land ice is known as ice free waters. The ice present in polar regions are also subdivided into four different categories depending on the time of their presence and their thickness. Those categories are first year sea ice, thin first year ice, medium first year ice and old ice. So let us now talk about these four types one by one. First year sea ice. It is a sea ice which has undergone not more than one winter growth and it has been developed from young ice with thickness being from 0.3 meters to 2 meter. Thin first year ice. First year ice which is 0.3 meter to 7 meter thick is known as thin first year ice whereas first year ice which is 0.7 meter to 1.2 meters in thickness is known as medium first year ice old ice as discussed in earlier video polar regions have continuous sunlight for a period of nearly six months approximately on each pole so sea ice which survived at least one summer's melt and thickness being three meter or more is known as old ice old ice is further divided into residual first year second year and multi-year ice depending on its ability to survive the summer melt each year. So until now in this video you were able to observe the, the flowchart which I have drafted to show you the different categories of ice. So let us move on to different types of polar ships. The polar ships are also divided into three different categories on the basis of hazardous situations and thickness of ice present in the sea areas which these ships operate. Category A ship is a ship which is designed for operation in polar waters in at least medium first year ice which also may include old ice. Category B ship is a ship which designed for operation in polar waters in at least thin first year ice which also include old ice. Category C ship is a ship that neither falls in category A nor category B but it is only capable of handling ice of lesser thickness in comparatively to category A or B. See before making this video I also referred some YouTube videos on polar code. I have found two to three videos in which the makers of this video have misunderstood the concept of polar class and categories of polar ships. Polar class is not a category of a ship but it is a class which is assigned to a ship by the classification society like Lloyd's Register, Bureau Veritas or American Bureau of Shipping etc. Each individual of this classification society assign the ships to their designated polar class depending on their class requirement of ship structure and construction. So in this picture you can observe the list of classes on the left column 
and in bottom row you can observe the ice thickness which is shown as the amount of ice in a glass of whiskey depicting the amount of ice the particular shape glass can handle never ever get confused between these two oral exam surveyor will definitely ask this question what is a polar class or a what is a ice class categories of ship so both these things are entirely different which we have discussed now this is a tricky question i hope you have understood moving on to the next definition mean daily low temperature or mdlt it is a mean value of daily low temperature for each day for over a period of minimum 10 years if there is no data for 10 years then you are allowed to use mdlt which is accepted by the administration polar service temperature est is a temperature specified for each ship which operate in the low air temperature regions polar service temperature is 10 degrees lesser than the lowest mdlt for the specific area in which the ship will operate polar service temperature is such an important aspect to the polar ships because each and every equipment and survival system which is fitted on the polar ship is supposed to be fully functional at polar service temperature this is a mandatory requirement by the imo and solas and also a polar code polar ship certificate polar ship certificate is a mandatory certificate which is required for every polar ship that operates in the polar region it is issued after a successful initial or renewal survey done as per requirements of the polar code polar ship certificates can be either issued by the administration or by a organization which is recognized by the administration and this certificate must be issued in accordance with the polar code polar ship certificate must be in english french or spanish if any other language is used then translation must be done to any one of these languages respectively moving on operational assessment operational assessment is an assessment done on the polar ships and its equipment to establish procedures to find operational limitations the operational assessment must be done in a range of operating and environmental conditions environmental condition means operation in low air temperature ice high latitude etc operational assessment proves the ability of the polar ship and its equipment for abandonment onto sea or land in any polar region the operational assessment is done to check the ability of polar ship and its equipment to withstand or survive the hazards in the polar region make sure to watch the second video of the polar code to understand how hazards can affect polar ship operation around the polar region subscribe to my channel sailor school so let us move on to the chapter 2 polar water operational manual polar water operational manual applies to all ships which follows the polar code this manual includes information on ship specific capabilities and limitations in relation to the operational assessment which we talked about earlier the manual must contain procedures to be followed in normal operations and procedures to be followed to avoid dangerous hazards which can affect the operation of the ship in polar region the manual must also contain procedures to be followed in case of incidents in polar waters and when using ice breaker assistance also procedures for contacting emergency response providers such as salvage search and rescue or spill response teams etc polar water operational manual also contains most important procedures which are used for maintaining life support and ship integrity if the polar ship gets stuck inside the ice for a very very long time so i hope you understood the importance of polar water operational manual and its role in polar ships chapter 3 ship structure this chapter just specifies the type of material and type of scantlings used to maintain the structural integrity of a polar ship 
specifically this chapter tells us that materials used in constructing a polar ship which is intended to operate in lower temperature must have ability to withstand polar surface temperature in case of ice strengthened ships the ships must be designed to resist both global and local structural loads which can occur in any unexpected harsh weather conditions this chapter also tells us that all the materials used for construction of polar ships to be approved by administration category a and b ships must strictly follow the rules of this chapter whereas the construction of category c ships must be also approved by administration but the strength of its construction is entirely dependent on which area the category c ship operates chapter 4 subdivision and stability this chapter tells us about intact and damaged stability requirements for the polar ships apart from these two we get to see functional requirements which states the stability of a ship when ice accretion or build up of ice occurs category a and category b ships must have a good stability in order to sustain any ice related damages okay now let us dive into another important topic which can be asked by the oral examiner when a ship operates in polar region ice build up or ice accretion on superstructure of the ship or deck of the ships is usually natural because of this ice accretion the stability of the vessel may be varying or it might also lead to capsizing of a ship if the weight of this ice is not allowed for so hence imo has brought up some strict guidelines regarding the allowance for ice accretion on ships 30 kg per meter square on any exposed weather deck and gangways 7.5 kg per meter square on ship side above water plane polar ships must be designed in such a way that minimal ice accretion occurs the ships must carry the equipment which is approved by the administration and this equipment must be having ability to remove such ice accretion on deck etc usually they will be giving electrical or pneumatic tools axes or wooden clubs for removing the ice accretion on ships icing allowance is included in the stability calculation ice accretion to be carefully monitored and necessary steps must be taken to ensure that ice accretion does not exceed the values mentioned in the polar water operational manual stability in damaged condition as discussed before category a and b ships must have ability to withstand flooding resulting from hull penetration due to ice impact or when collided with ice so here in this slide you can see three requirements so there is nothing much to explain about you can understand the upper ice water line etc in this picture okay surveyor might be keenly concerned about this stability requirement because this is like uh, you are supposed to spell it out word by word as they expect moving on chapter 11 voyage planning This chapter tells us what all things to be considered when a voyage planning is done in polar waters. The voyage planning done on normal sea areas and polar regions are entirely different because the hazards present in them are varying from each other. The sole responsibility for adopting a voyage plan is of master of the vessel. The things to be considered when making a voyage plan includes polar water operational manual limitations of hydrographic information aids to navigation current information on the extent and type of ice present along the planned passage temperature along the planned track places of refuge in case to avoid any immediate danger the regions of seasonal migration of marine mammals is also to be considered operation in areas for search and rescue operation vessel traffic services or if any any salvage services etc uh, all this information must be known before making a passage in polar waters these are the additional things which we must consider before making a passage plan in polar waters chapter 12 manning and training okay now let us talk about manning of polar ships and also talk if any mandatory additional training 
must be given to ship crew to work in a polar waters note that these additional trainings are just like add on to your normal training which are done as per stcw convention as per your rank on board okay now you can see in this table the additional or special training needed for ship crew operating in polar regions which are mentioned individually for tankers passenger ships and other types of ship on the basis of types of routes ship take okay thank you guys for watching this video till the end i hope you have enjoyed the video actually i feel bad because there is no any there are no any videos of uh, ships doing voyages in polar regions etc because i'm not able to find so that i could have tried to explain you better other than just uh, pics from this google for your reference so i'm really sorry about that i hope you have enjoyed my video if you have any doubts regarding my video please uh, mention it in the comment box below subscribe to sailor school for more exciting content in future thank you guys all the best for your exams